How much time needs to pass before grave robbing turns into archaeology? In North America archaeologists have to be extremely careful with any kind of Native American burial. Nowadays it's more and more common that archaeologists might get a chance to look at a burial, but they put it back in place as best as they can when they are done. So they study the burial, but take nothing from it. This is because the living ancestors of these ancient people still like to honor their dead. The vast majority of archaeology undertaken is developer led meaning the site is only being dug because it's going to be developed for housing slash industry slash quarrying etc. The site is essentially going to be trashed. There is no possibility of putting things back because the site will be built on and the ground irretrievably altered by heavy machinery. Full archaeological excavation is generally seen as a last resort where preservation in situ isn't possible. The idea of excavation for excavation's sake is a bit old fashioned these days and most reputable archaeologists would agree that it's better to leave things in the ground as they are rather than disturb them for no reason. In Beijing, when they were digging their public train slash subway lines, they found a bunch of prehistoric humans and their artifacts. Today, the stop in question, Wangfujing, has a small Paleolithic museum, https slash slash www tripadvisor.com slash attraction underscore review g294212 d3674536 reviews wangfijing underscore ancient underscore human underscore museum beijing html composed of objects they found on the site i found it by accident when i visited over a decade ago it's nestled into a shopping plaza a five minute museum sorry but this is just one room with a few bones and rocks found when they excavated for the shopping center. So if you need a 5 minute distraction from shopping, pop in. But don't travel to CI at school. But I can understand that disappointment, if you didn't know. I still think it's an awesome way for them to have done it though. There's also a methodology component to it. Regardless of the age of the remains, if I womble up with a metal detector, dig a hole and yoink out anything of value, that's grave robbing. If I fight for months for planning approval, record every detail of the site in obsessive detail, then refill any holes carefully when the funding has run out, even though there's still more to discover, that's archaeology. Plus archaeology is not just graves. Please google Kinuic man. Could be thousands of years depending on the relatives. Interestingly, Upsi the Iceman also has living relatives. Around 19 in Austria. It's possible one of these men is a direct descendant, meaning an unbroken lineage for 5, 300 years. Upsi is absolutely fascinating to me. I love that kind of stuff. You seen the site, where you can view his tattoos in normal and other light. Don't tease us. What's the link? I was gonna post it swear. I looked for ages online lmao. Hopefully this works. I had to find it via my uni account. Link http slash slash www Iceman for Toscan EU slash If you're opening the grave to make money you're a grave robber. If you're spending money to open it, you're an archaeologist. But if you open the graves for another purpose, like jewelry you would like to wear, necrophilia or cannibalism, and had to spend money to buy the tools for it, it would still be grave robbing though. I don't know man. Sometimes I think it's the same distinction between a soldier killing enemy combatants and murder. Just something we made up to put a name on the same taboo action for grander pursuits. Like 20 minutes. Like em while they are still warm. I hope I've at least gone cold before I'm buried. Bloody doodler. Lingerers. Man. I'm an archaeologist. Currently conducting postgraduate research focusing on early medieval trade in the North Atlantic which is a fancy way of saying viking fishermen. As others have said, it's not a matter of time as much as it is intent. Grave robbing is an unsanctioned, for-profit endeavor. Archaeology is illegally permitted. Scientific examination for the purpose of understanding the past, generally speaking exhumation of recently interred, remains for those purposes is forensic, rather than archaeological. Despite similar methodology as it's usually conducted in the course of a criminal investigation, Contrary to the popular imagination, burial archaeology is probably only about 10% of the science. If that, most of it is mundane shit like analyzing fishbone assemblages, 
One man's trash is another man's treasure. Literally for archaeologists. Finding a trash pit is a literal treasure in archaeology. I'm an archaeologist, but I usually deal with human remains, but I've seen my colleagues so happy when they found a trash pit, I think that's how it's called in English. Sorry not my first language. They have so so much historical information stored. We call it a midden in English. Or maybe even a domestic refuse depositional context, if we are feeling super fancy. I actually had to look this up once for reasons. It's 100 years, or when the deceased has no remaining living relatives. Whichever comes first. I'd think there should also be some sort of acknowledged organization involved. If I'm gonna do some archaeology and dig up 100 plus year old graves at my local graveyard I'm probably still gonna be arrested for grave robbing. I guess you can say the answer, backslash backslash underscore, backslash backslash underscore, backslash backslash underscore, is buried somewhere in this thread. I don't have an award, but I wish I did. Here now you do, madman. I'm an archaeologist. It depends on where you live. In the US, most, if not all states have laws prohibiting the purposeful disturbance of burials. This includes ones that are 2 years in the ground to 10,000 years. Native American burials are further protected by federal laws. If you're an archaeologist and you come across a burial on a site, you need to notify the county coroner, the local police, your state's historic preservation office, and potentially the local Native American tribe. They will make determinations as to its approximate age, and if an investigation is needed, what happens to the remains. Or if there is a possibility slash need for notification of next of kin, then you dig it up. Most of the time, it's pretty straightforward, and it is dug up. Generally speaking, as an archaeologist in the US you don't go looking for burials to purposely dig them up, unless there is a good reason, since it triggers all sorts of laws and questions of ethics. Generally speaking, as an archaeologist in the US you don't go looking for burials to purposely dig them up, unless there is a good reason, since it triggers all sorts of laws and questions of ethics. This is true in Europe too. The reason why we have comparatively more modern archaeological excavation of human remains is because archaeological oversight of development projects is more strict, and because urban areas have generally seen continual development for at least a thousand years or more. That's why we buried a king under a car park in England, and keep finding Roman villas when we want to build on Greenland. P. This is the thing. I personally couldn't care less what's done with my corpse or my stuff. But if I did, and you put a tube station on top of me without checking, you'd be getting haunted t fuck. I usually wait for the family to leave. Classy. I think the grave could be thousands of years old it's still grave robbing if you're doing it to sell and for wealth and not under strict guided scientific theory. Like there's a big problem in Africa and the Middle East and even China where dudes dig up old graves with bulldozers and just sell that shit. I'd call them grave robbers. Back in the 19th century archaeologists were just glorified grave robbers taking Egyptian artifacts back to their European museums. It isn't time it is intent. Grave robbing is to plunder the grave for valuables. Excavating an archaeological site is to learn. British laughing in the distance. Oh I. Aussie here. As an archaeologist I think this is a very weird question. As a grave robber I think this is a legit question. Answer archaeologist. It's a bit of a grey area really. Most archaeology is developer led these days. The only reason the site gets excavated is because it's going to be developed for housing, industry, quarrying etc. In these cases the site is going to be trashed and full excavation is only done as a last resort to ensure features and finds are properly recorded, removed and stored before they are destroyed by heavy machinery. Most reputable archaeologists would recommend that things are best left in the ground and undisturbed if at all possible, regardless of age. So, on development sites, the age of the grave really doesn't matter, but speaking from experience, if it's wrapped in carpet, found in the topsoil, or has better trainers than me, as an archaeologist I'm still calling the cops, anything else gets excavated to the highest professional standards, and treated with respect. Also, if it's been done for archaeology you need a license to handle human remains. I guess grave robbers are not bothered by such red tape. 
until all the living relatives at the time of death are dead. But then there's the obvious problem of only children with no children themselves with few relatives so idk. That kind of makes sense. Maybe long enough, so that no one alive knows that the grave was a relative. Exactly then I guess you're not potentially hurting anyone living. But is it okay to hurt dead people? It's not okay to hurt dead people. It's also not possible to hurt dead people. So it's not really something we need to worry about. It's not a question of time. But a rather a question of hats. You could also be a graver -a of prehistoric artifacts. Archaeology is dedicated to preserving the finds and putting them into the right historical context. Gravarabas just want money. Depends how many guns the people who have a problem with it have. I actually worked on an archaeological excavation a few years ago where we dug up 3000 year old missionary and tombs in Greece. The biggest issue we encountered was that at night and during the off season, winter months, grave robbers would come to dig up the tombs to steal the artifacts in them. Once we discovered tombs we actually had to hire a night guard to watch over them while we weren't there. These robbers had actually stolen most of the artifacts discovered at the site from the late 20th century to now, and although most were lost, some gold seal rings were found and recovered at a metropolitan auction when a professor recognized them. Archaeology is the art of destruction. Every time you remove a stone or move dirt, you are destroying something that someone made. Archaeologists acknowledge this and dedicate their lives to noting every detail and cataloging everything that they find. All of this is done for the pursuit of knowledge their work is the foundation of our understanding of the ancient world. They usually have no money and their careers ahead of them are not easy. Looters are just in it to profit off it and they can make a lot of money. Every time they remove an artifact, the artifact itself disappears forever just to end up in someone's private collection that they can't even show to their friends. And all the information vanishes with it because without context it's just another mysterious old thing. Depends which side of the gunboat you're on. Well at least it did. 